Welcome to another exciting edition of the Professional Plumber Podcast. My name is Willem Klopper, I'm your host, and I'm joined in this episode by Dave van der and Chris Wenzel to discuss the link between delivering excellent and quality customer services and being a professional. Now we all know that plumbing is a complex and, a, and an intricate trade that requires much theoretical and technical knowledge and skills and expertise. But at the end of the day, every plumbing service that we deliver is delivered to a customer. Hence, customer services and customer relations are as important to any successful plumbing business as the technical knowledge and the theoretical knowledge and skills and expertise that you already have. Chris and Dave, welcome to the two of you as well. And thanks, Stack, for joining me for this podcast. Thank you so much, Willem. Now, before we get into the juicy details and, and the couple of questions that I have for each of you, uh, I think it's going to make for a, a brilliant conversation to discuss the link between being a professional and customer service and excellent customer service. Before we get there, I'd like for each of you to just quickly and briefly introduce yourself to the audience and uh, to just give them an idea of who you are, your role in the industry, and a little bit of a career background. Dave, if we can start with you. Okay, my name is Dave. Like you said, um, I've been in the industry for 27 years. Uh, we were mainly in construction. We did go to maintenance eventually. Um, eventually studied marketing and business management. Um, I'm also an auditor uh, from 2017. And yes, I do it for the love of the game. And my, my passion is basically to train people that need training. Uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot of, I travel vast areas, uh, North to West, Limpopo and Makumalanga. And there's a lot of guys that we don't see that don't get the proper training uh, that they need. Um, so as far as I can, I'm, I'm trying everybody, but they have my number if they have a problem. <laughs> but Dave, you're also a qualified, registered and licensed plumber, in addition to being a business owner and having owned businesses, different businesses within the construction and plumbing industry. You're also a qualified and registered plumber. Is that correct? Qualified plumber, qualified solar, qualified heat pump technician. Mm -hmm. And a qualified auditor, for that matter. As that well. also. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, please introduce yourself to our viewers. Yeah. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Wenzel. I reside in Paris in the Free State. And um, I've been in the plumbing industry for the last seven odd years. Uh, I came to the game a little bit later in my life. I've uh, had some experience in construction, in the mining industry. I dabbled a bit in, in the corporate world. We, we had some franchising businesses. And uh, I read an interesting book by Polo Qualio about finding the legend. And uh, strangely, I love uh, my my love in life is, is is serving people, and what a beautiful industry to be in if you want to serve people, if you just want to make people happy. Mm. I tell you what, it is it is incredible. So um, join join the plumbing game a bit late, but um, I'm having tremendous fun. We've got a business here in in Paris, and uh, we work all the way down to Bloemfontein. We work in Memel in the Free State. I've got a customer who sent me down to to Mossel Bay. Uh, we also travel up to Joburg. Um, like uh, my colleague, I'm also a, a licensed and qualified plumber. I'm also a qualified gas installer and also solar uh, installer. Mm. So, yeah, just loving every single day of my life. This is a beautiful, beautiful industry to be in. <laughs> Chris, also yourself, uh, a qualified, licensed and registered plumber. Um, and currently also serving on the board of the PRB, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct, yes. And again, it boils down to what you're saying about finding your legend you found it in the plumbing industry. Mm -hmm. And I like what you're saying about making people happy because that's what plumbers do, isn't it? People are already angry by the time that they phone plumbers to come and assist and come and help them to solve their problems. And by solving problems, and plumbers are, essentially plumbers are problem solvers because that's when people phone them. And they make people happy when they deliver excellent and quality services. Chris, Dave, and our listeners and viewers out there, I did mention that you know we, we have a lot to say, there is much to say about delivering excellent services um, and high standard, high level of quality services. And 
the link between that and being a professional. And I've got a couple of questions for the both of you. And I am quite excited to delve into the details of our conversation. But just before we do, uh, we'd, I'd like for us to take a quick ad break. And to our listeners and our viewers out there, please do stay tuned because this is going to get very interesting. I want you to stay tuned because we'll be right back after this. Do you work for yourself or run your own company? A lack of knowledge about finances and financial management can limit your growth. The tools function on App Plumber offers you assistance in calculating your call-out fees and service rates so that your business not merely survives but also makes a profit. Install App Plumber today and use the tool functions to make sure you charge your worth. Welcome back. You are still tuned in to another exciting edition of the Professional Plumbing Podcast or Professional Plumber Podcast. Uh, I have with me in studio Mr. Dave van Amerwe and Mr. Chris Wenzel. And we're discussing today in this specific episode the link between being a professional and delivering a high level of quality services, good and excellent customer services. Now, I want to ask you, Chris, with your experience in a variety of, of industries and businesses, are you or, or would you say that delivering quality and excellent customer service and building customer relations and that rapport with your customers, is it as important in any type of business, in any type of industry as it is in the plumbing industry? Um, that is a resounding yes, absolutely. And and I would even go further and say it is just as important in your personal life, you know, because if you if you are excellent in, in your personal life, it is all through it on your business. And I promise you the amount of success that you will receive if that service excellence uh, is part of the, the culture of your business uh, in any industry, in any business, um, it, it will it'll turn itself around into financial compensation, which everybody wants. You can just think about service delivery currently that people experience across the country, you know, when people go to a restaurant, you know, they're very keen to share that on Facebook. They're keen to share it on Instagram. So, you know, if you can make people happy and plumbing normally, like you said, is a bit of a grudge buy. But I tell you what, when you walk out of that house and everyone's happy and they got hot water, you're the hero and they will call you again for sure. Just leave it better than you found it. That's our motto. What is the importance? Let's look at the importance because I, the fact is that whether you're a plumber, whatever tradesperson you are, whatever kind of services or products for that matter that you deliver, you at the end of the day deliver that to a customer, to a paying yeah. a person who pays you for your services. And whether that's in the plumbing industry or whether that's in any other industry or line of business, but what is the importance? What is the why is it important to deliver good customer service? I think at the end of the day, the customer wants to know that they're always going to be looked after. And you know, if you are professional, if you belong to a professional body, you know, it just instills more confidence. Mm. It gives the customer that idea and that knowledge. This is a guy that I can speak to. This is a guy that acts the right way. This is a guy who's got his professional indemnity insurance. If something goes wrong and he falls through my roof or he breaks my grandmother's vase, he's got the insurance to replace it. 
you know he is he's constant continuously being being trained like we are you know we get our cpd points which is a requirement if you are part of a professional body and that gives so much uh, confidence you know and i'm very proud of that and that's the first thing i i, I show my customer look i belong to the prb and there's my, my sticker on my van you know and uh, that's the reason we are professionals so absolutely that is the key thing is being professional mm. It's, it's establishing that trust again, like you said, I want to reiterate what you said about the trust. Establishing the trust, because when you have established that trust with your customer and you've delivered excellent, good quality services to them, they become a return customer. It's a return Absolutely. business that comes to your business, right? And they also then start, they res, it results in referrals, because that's what happens. Customers who've reserved excellent customer service from a professional person who delivers professional services will refer them. They will refer, they will tell their family and their friends and their acquaintances about the person who's delivered that excellent service to them. Very true, very true. And we find that in our business, almost 99% of our business is referrals. You know, and, and like you say, that... Um, that excellence is is the main thing i always teach my guys and i even say this to my customers for a customer to open his checkbook the first time you know uh, is not our goal because to get a job uh, is nice but what is beautiful is if we can do business with you sir again this year or next year because imagine if you've got a thousand customers on your book and next year you only get one call out from each one of them let's say at 550 that puts a half a million rand on your bottom line, which you had no marketing fees on. So it, it's key in business, absolutely. So I want to dig a little bit more into that link between being a professional and delivering excellent customer service, high quality, high standard service. So my next question goes out to you, Dave. Dave, firstly, I want to ask you the question from your perspective. I mean, you form part of a professional body yourself. You're also a professional plumber in the industry. So would you say that, the, firstly, my first question is, is there a definite link between being a professional and delivering excellent or high quality and high standard services? And if your answer is yes, I'll give you the answer yourself. Why would you say that? Why do you say your answer? Well, at the end of the day, professional goes a long way because you need to train uh, training and it goes a long way for knowledge at the end of the day to deliver what you know at the end of the day for your client with what Chris also said is is that at the end of the day if you have the knowledge and you leave the their premises after you've done the job they will be happy and you will get your referrals so it's from from a PRB perspective, of they doing their part with webinars and uh, to train plumbers that they can't always see because we're all around South Africa. Mm. So they from their part they are trying to make us a better person uh, to basically give uh, the customer a better service to continuously develop the plumbers That's and true. give them more training, more knowledge. Um, would you say that? I mean, after all. You, you name it, being a professional involves a lot of training. It's, it's first of all, a profession is a paid occupation. I'm going to read this off of my notes here. Is a profession is a paid occupation, especially one that involves prolonged training and a formal qualification. And that's exactly what Dave, I, 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 I can concur to what you're saying now is, that's exactly what primers are. They've gone through rigorous training theoretical and technical training to gain that knowledge and that skills acquired for training because like I said at the beginning plumbing is a complex and intricate it's an intricate it's not just a question of fitting a couple of pipes together or fixing a leak or replacing a tap or installing a tap or installing a geezer there's a lot more complexities regarding plumbing that they need to know and that extensive training that rigorous training and education that you have to go through um, and I like what you said about the professional body, and I like the word professional again, is that the professional body contributes to that training. They, they push forward to make sure that whoever registers with them has been properly trained and properly qualified. So if they follow a profession, an occupation in plumbing, it's their professional, therefore they are a professional plumber. 
because of the fact that they have the correct training and qualification. And hence the fact that, you know, it, it goes together with, with delivering excellent service because you can. You can deliver excellent service because of the knowledge, the skills and the expertise that you bring to the table. Is that, would you agree with that? Yes, that's correct. Now, Dave, Chris, I've got a lot more questions for the two of you, and I've got a lot more to say about customer service, excellent customer service, and being a professional. But before we go on with our conversation, I'd like for us to go into an ad break quickly. And uh, to our viewers out there, please do stay tuned, because this is going to get a little bit more interesting than what it already is. We'll see you right after this. Good day, how can I help you? Hi, I'm here to log in my COCs, but I seem to be having an issue with my computer. No problem, but did you know that you can log your COCs using an app on your cell phone? Oh, what app is that? It's called The App Plumber. Do you have a smartphone with you? Yes, I do. Oh well, let me show you how it works. Not only can you access your PRRB profile on The App Plumber, but you can also earn CPD points while exploring the plumbing industry in the palm of your hand. Download the app from Google Play Store and join thousands of other happy users. The PRRB Master Plumber Recognition Program has officially arrived. As an essential service to society, there must be constant growth and development within this important and ever-changing industry. Developed by the PRRB, the Master Plumber Recognition Program has launched as a new PRRB designation, allowing industry champions to take the lead. Skilled and experienced plumbers equipped to take the lead, enroll today to start your journey in becoming a recognized PRRB Master Plumber. Welcome back. You are still tuned in to another exciting edition of the Professional Plumbing Podcast or Professional Plumber Podcast. I have with me in for, for this episode, I have uh, Mr. Dave uh, van der Merwe and I have uh, Mr. Chris Wenzel. Both of them having well, being well experienced plumbers within the plumbing industry and uh, within business for that matter different kinds of business, construction businesses, and their experience certainly contributing a lot of value to this conversation that we're having about the link between excellent and good customer service and being a professional. Now, Chris, I wanted to, just before we went into the ad break, I was chatting to Dave uh, about um, the principle of um, being a professional and sort of that link between being a professional and the, the, the excellent services that you can deliver when you're a professional. And yeah. that, that principle, Dave touched and, and Dave and I both alluded to plumbing being complex and intricate and the training, the rigorous training that, we, that, that plumbers need to undergo for them to be regarded as plumbers. What can you tell us and what is your perspective on that principle? That is, that is, that is super important. I, I, I can't even think of a better word. But um, the training involved in, in plumbing is, is, I think, much more intricate than people should think. You know, they normally look at tradesmen and think, you know, it's, 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 it's almost the, the doff guys that, that do that. But it's, it's not. There's a, there's, a, there's a long apprenticeship you know, one has to uh, get a lot of theoretical knowledge and then there's obviously the practical work as well. Um, and it's a complex job. You know, we are responsible for hygiene in homes. You know, it's not just about connecting pipes. It's not about just cleaning your drain. It's about ensuring that should there be 
uh, a, a spill in another house upstream from yours uh, and the water is contaminated, that it doesn't spill into your house, into the rest of the town. So it's actually a very responsible job. You know, we, we're responsible for the hygiene and the health in our communities, in our towns and wherever we work. You know, um, and you must respect a, a plumber for the rigorous training they undergo because, you know, we work in circumstances some days that are quite uh, horrible, horrible, <laughs> you know. But um, if you're properly qualified and you've, you've, you've done your training, um, you belong to a professional body like the PIRB, um, you know, with the continuous training you receive, uh, you, you just come across as a well-rounded individual. You know, we sometimes... Uh, when we get older, and, and I'm touching on 50, you know, so when you get older, you get a bit complacent. You think you know everything. You think that, oh, what can these guys teach me? But if you look at the quality of training, the, 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 I've, I've recently done the solar training, and I'm so excited about other things I'm going to do next year. If you look at the quality of the training, and the knowledge that you receive. And of course, uh, tapping into that knowledge um, uh, uh, through Articulate and, and IOPSA and PRB with, uh, with, uh, with the auditors, you know, it's, it's very more extensive than one would think. So if a plumber is out there that hasn't joined the PRB or is not part of this professional body and, and ensure that you are with a professional body, which is only the PRB, I promise you, once you go and start doing the training on Articulate, with IOPS and with PRB, you will glean into more knowledge than you ever thought possible. And it's going to change your business. You know, you, you'll be more confident. You'll speak uh, to your customers in, 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 in such a way that you'll be regarded, again, as the professional and you'll be the guy they call every time. Chris, the fact is that, um, you know, it's not only the theoretical and the technical knowledge that plumbers should know, but they should also know about legislation and the requirements of standards. And if, if the average consumer and person on the street out there can just know exactly what the requirements are. You know, I've, I've had a, 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 just before we started with this specific podcast, I had a podcast that was technical or technically orientated and we discussed, you know, it's like the bends of pipes and how that should be calculated. If it's a certain distance, then it's not allowed to have a bend that's more than a certain degrees. So there's mathematical calculations, problem solving that comes into, into plumbing more than just so than knowing how to technically fit two pipes together or, or those kind of things. It is very complicated, very complex and intricate. Would you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I laughed recently. Uh, we were doing installation and the customer had some other guy there also wanting to quote on the job. And obviously, you know, people go cheap and nasty. Um, but I took out the Sandsco and I explained to the customer, this is why we do what we do. This is why it's coming at a premium. And he was astounded when he found out that we've got certain noise levels within the pipes and speeds that water can flow, um, which is acceptable and not acceptable. And it's legislated. You know, so if, if you look at the, the weights of solar geysers, which Dave is an expert on as well, uh, on roofs, for insurance purposes and things like that, that has to be calculated, you know. So there's a lot of complexity and it's 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 very interesting. And again, you know, that's why there's a five-year apprenticeship um, and it's it's a serious trade, it's, mm. but it's beautiful. It's a wonderful game. So now I want to get back to to the, the let's talk about, so they've got to comply with all of these things. They've got to comply with standards. They've got to know about legislation. They've got to have the technical knowledge, the theoretical knowledge um, and the expertise um, you know, to be properly qualified. And, and now let's talk about the professional body. Let's get back to the word professional. Um, how, does, how does a professional body, an organization like the PIRB for that matter, Dave, this question is for you. How do they sort of ensure that there's a benefit to both plumber and customer alike? Um, when the plumber is and forms part of this sort of, um, when they register with a professional body, but when they sort of form part of this professional community, this, this community of like-minded people who take pride and, uh, in their trade and who sees themselves as professionals. 
Okay, so if you if you think back to when we did uh, the first plumbing, uh, um, your red seal at Olifons Fontaine, it was done and dusted. You did your practical, taste and practical. It was the end of the story. So PRB came in and they eventually said, okay, well, let's start a standard. And we did the training and everything with PRB. And in 2017, we got a lot more inspectors. So they eventually said, okay, now it's fine to do everything you have to have a COC at the end of the day because you have to sign off your work to say that you'd comply to the standards and there's certain rules and regulations for that. But they didn't stop there. And that's a lovely thing about it is because they eventually said, now, okay, well, we want to go on and we want to keep our plumbers, that's part of our, our family. We want to keep them up to date because there is stuff that is changing. And we, the, for the younger guys, the same thing for the older guys that's gotten something. They just said, okay, we want to go out. We want to start the webinars so that you can have the ability to have some extra knowledge for stuff that you didn't know of. Hmm. Um, going back to Chris, when we did solar in 2017 at Quicot, um, I can say it's like 15% of what the the solar is now with with everything, with ambient pressure and direction. Yes, there was also, but it's a lot more complicated. But it is available to go to get that and and to be on track with what's uh, what's happening now. And that's also why they have the CBD points. Uh, mm. that you have to accumulate so that they can know that you're doing your part at the end of the day to keep up to date. Mm. They can put it out there, but if you don't go from your side. From the other side is that they have a contract, PRB has a contract with the HOPSA for auditors to go out and see, is the plumbers listening to what we are saying? Are they complying to the standards that we have at present time? And at the end of the day, yes, we do get some uh, installation that's not right, that's where the training comes in for the plumber. And that's where the refix come in so that we can see that the plumber went out and he did do what we trained him after he didn't know. Um, and so that's how we keep track that the plumbers out there is doing their part in the game. Let's call it continuous professional development. I like that's that word right. professional. The fact is that, yes, there are things put in place for plumbers to continually learn about their trade and their industry because things are ever evolving. The trade itself is ever evolving. Technology is evolving. There may be new materials. There may be new tools and equipments. There may be new methods of ways of doing things. The standards may be reviewed and then if you lack behind, if you don't continuously keep up with what's going on in your trade, you're going to lack behind and you're not going to be able to deliver the same excellent and quality services to your customers as the plumber who does actually keep up to date with their trade. But I also liked what you, what you said about uh, the fact that, you know, the auditing process that the PRB brought in, because that to me, if I listen to what you're saying is, a plumber, you know, they, they take pride in what they do. They view themselves as a professional and they take pride in their trade. They know that they have to comply with certain requirements of the standards and applicable standards. They certify themselves as compliant or their work as being compliant with the standards and the requirements of the standards. So they, take, they do it with pride and confidence, right? By certifying, by signing that COC and issuing that to the customer, they open themselves up voluntarily, open themselves up to being inspected, for their work to be inspected, to be audited. And that shows a lot of confidence because they know they've got the skills, the knowledge that they need, that is required to make a success and do their work correct, correctly, and according to the requirements of the standard. So they do so issue that certif the certification, that COC, with pride and with confidence. And then... Should it be audited, should it be selected for audited and it goes through the audit process and the auditor finds uh, something that is not quite conformant or not quite compliant, they offer the plumber the opportunity to go and fix it. And it's a way of the auditor then saying to the plumber, hey, you know what, for whatever reason, it might be something that you haven't known or that you just might have understood incorrectly, 
But here we offer you the knowledge by giving you the right way to do it. We're informing you that it should be done in this way. And we're giving you the opportunity to go and fix it. In other words, we, you're growing, you're learning through the process of, like you learn through the process of CPD, continuous professional development, you're also learning and growing through the process of the auditing. It's not a punitive measure, Dave, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. It's, from me as a layperson, I'm not a plumber, it doesn't sound like a punitive measure. It sounds like the opportunity to grow and keep developing and keep learning. Is that correct? Is that your yeah, opinion as well? All right. So the, what we find uh, in the field, and uh, we know between the inspectors and everything, is that the plumbers out there don't always understand 100% how the book works. The plumbing Bible, we call it, sun's laws. So they understand it in a, a tweaked way, if you want to call it that. Um, and there is not really, because it's so vast area that we have to cover, then nobody's always there. So that's why the Sun's book was designed. But I think at the end of the day, coming back to PERP with the webinars, the, it's helping a lot. And they do learn from that because that's hands-on uh, to help them to basically become a better professional, if you want to call it that. Yeah, as well as these kind of podcasts that we're having now, the technical podcasts, the business orientated podcasts yeah. and those kind of things. That's how the PRB ensures that their plumbers registered with them, stays up to date with their train, that they continuously develop as professionals so that they can go back out in the field and the customers that make use of licensed registered plumbers, properly qualified plumbers can have that assurance that when they use these professional plumbers that form part of a professional body, that they will get professional services, excellent, good mm -hmm. services. So Dave and uh, 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 Chris, we've come to an end or we've drawn to a close of this specific episode. But just before we say goodbye to you as our guest, do, do, do either of you have a, a final or a last word to our audience? There's, there's maybe one thing I'd like to address, uh, Willem, and that is, uh, you know, what a professional body is. Uh, I don't think a lot of people understand that, you know, if you're an architect, if you're a medical doctor or an attorney, there's a, there's a professional body for each one of those occupations. And the same with plumbing. And for the plumbing industry, it is the PIRB. What people don't know is that these bodies have to be registered um, with government, obviously, and there's very strict laws on how they are being managed and operated. And there are people out there that um, would, would like to give out misinformation and create their own bodies. And, and most of the time, you know, these guys are only in it for financial gain. You know, it's always for free, but the, the, it's very quickly that they start asking for money. But if you, if you really go into that body or, 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 or group of people, you will find very quickly that it's privately owned companies. It's not professional bodies. They're not registered with government and they're not being audited. They're not going through these rigorous audits and financial responsibilities, responsibilities for training. Um, so the, the PRP is really putting themselves out there uh, of being that professional body. And I tell you what, uh, the audits these guys undergo are very, very strict. And they, 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 will, they will just cancel your, your, your membership immediately if, if there's something wrong. And that's why I'm so proud of them because uh, Lee and the guys are doing a fantastic job. And I tell you what, Join them, you'll be proud and you'll make more money. Mm. Uh, the, uh, and again, it boils down to, I know you, you mentioned the, the rigorous thing about uh, they could cancel your, uh, your, your membership if, you, if, if something goes wrong. But the fact is, you know, there are processes in place. It's not just a question of cancelling somebody's membership. It's that opportunity, giving them that opportunity of going to fix something. But the fact is that what I think what you're, what you're alluding to, Chris, is the fact that there is recourse that there is recourse for the customer, that if something does go wrong and if there is a dispute somewhere with, when it comes to services that was delivered by a PRB registered uh, plumber, that there is some sort of recourse for that customer. Absolutely, but uh, Willem, uh, just, just kindly uh, uh, think about what I said. I, I did not mean recourse to the plumber that his membership will be cancelled. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the professional body. Yes. So that professional body, if they don't pass their audits, they are in big trouble. Mm -hmm. And that should give the plumber and the consumer a lot of confidence to know that their professional bodies oh, yes. are being done yes. very strictly. There are rules with EPIRB if a plumber is a little bit naughty. And I tell you what, 
even if you are naughty and you do something not not completely right, PRB is beautiful in assisting you and getting you on track and making sure that you you be part of the family. They, they, they're not going to cancel the membership. But um, it's you. nice to... Now yes, with you, yes. You're talking you're gotcha. you about and, the, the status of the professional body that can be correct if, if something drastic goes wrong. Hey, correct. I wasn't even correct. thinking about it's, that. <laughs> but just, just, just remember, you're talking to a Dutchman, so my broken English uh, doesn't always get the, the message. <laughs> Dave, any last words from you? Final statements. Yes, um, from PRB side, I think they're doing their part to to uplift any plumber, uh, no matter what. That's why the whole auditing process is there. So we came across a lot of them that says, oh, we are the plumbing police. We're not. We're out in the field. We're there to help. We don't need to be with you, but we're there to help, to uplift you, to teach you. Uh, we encounter a lot of stuff in the field, um, but at the end of that uh, discussion or installation, when it comes to a refix or whatever, they, they've learned something. Uh, mm. And I think that's an excellent thing from PRB's side. Mm. That continuous professional yes. development, that continuous learning process that's right. to become even more professional and experienced than you already are. Dave, Chris, we've drawn to a close of this episode. I want to thank you two again for your time and your effort, the valuable information that you've shared from your different perspectives of the plumbing trade, the plumbing industry, professional plumbers, the professional body, and excellent service to the customers. To our listeners, and our viewers out there, please do not go away yet. We do have some industry announcements that you don't want to miss out on. So please do stay tuned because we'll be, we'll be right back right after this. The BIRB's National Roadshows are done and we will be closing off the year with a celebration of World Toilet Day. Join us on the 18th of November for a fun-filled day at the PRB's offices in Centurion, Pretoria. The festive season is just around the corner. The PRB would like to inform you of our office hours during the festive season. Be sure to contact us for urgent matters before we enter the holidays. From the 19th to the 23rd of December, we will be operating with skeleton staff. We will be closed between Christmas and New Year. From the 3rd to the 6th of January 2023, we will be operating with skeleton staff. We will return to operations with a full staff complement on the 9th of January 2023. Watch the first episode of the PIRB's On The Couch show now on the PIRB's YouTube channel. The PIRB remains committed to ensuring open and consistent communication within the plumbing industry. For your questions to be addressed on this show, please send us your questions via email to communications at pirb.co.za or via WhatsApp to number 079-833-6930. Become a part of the conversation today. And finally, it's time to announce the winner of the most recent round of the PRB's article writing competition. And the winner is Ntetaleli Kumeni, PRB registration number 8802-14 for his article about mentorship and apprenticeship. Ntetaleli has won himself an awesome prize and has earned himself four CPD points as his article will be posted on the TMP magazine on App Plumber. Be sure to enter the next round of this awesome competition of which the topic is Tell us about your audit experience.